Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Oh, I am so excited. I am going tonight to speak about why I am Catholic for a good couple of hours. This isn't just my testimony where I get to talk for an hour, squeeze 10 pounds of me in a five pound bag, which is kind of what I do in my outfits. You know, I'm growing out of them. Although I will say I was able to wear a pair of pants that I hadn't worn in a while. So that was kind of cool. I shouldn't say that I'm growing out of them, but I'm not, I'm not in my favorite presentation clothes at, at this time, but that's okay. All I know is I cannot wait to go to Grays Lake, Illinois tonight, talk about why I'm Catholic, sharing my rough road to this hard faith. But the faith isn't that hard because we have these sacraments that help us along the way, that give us a start over, a redo. How many times in life do you wish you had a redo button that you can start all over? Well, that's what this Catholic Church gives us. Hello? I mean, how cool is it? And nobody knows. Well, I shouldn't say that. Lots of us know, but many of us believe what the evil one told us about the church. And remember, evil works on our emotions. We don't want to live a restrained life. We want to live the way that Satan taught us our whole life, that we need to be happy, go lucky, and do whatever makes us happy. We are our own gods. We control our destiny. We are the ones that give us happiness and we can take drugs and go crazy. We have no restraints. We just take it all in because guess what? Life is short and life is real stressful and you need stuff to take the edge off. Oh, and by the way, he also told us that God is going to accept us no matter what, as long as we don't kill someone kind of thing. He's sly. He's clever. So if you can come tonight, bring some people, especially ones that are not believing or don't want to come back to the Catholic Church. And it may just give you a few nuggets that you can tuck into your pocket when you're challenged on your faith or when you need to respond in a way that is Catholic-based. Why are you Catholic? Have, have you ever answered that question? And if you haven't, you might want to try to craft yourself an answer. And so tonight isn't just going to be catechism. I'm not going to be a Patrick Madrid or, you know, Scott Hahn or something like that up there. By the way, that was really fun knowing that he was in town and still had a good chunk of people (laughs) come into the Magnificat event. That was funny. He was down the, he was down the road at another parish at my event on Sunday or Saturday. Okay, I digress. Going back, it is important for us to have stories. 
to be able to share how God has changed our life. Now, my testimony, and tonight, being Catholic, is all woven in. Because I'm basically going to share that I'm probably exactly like most of the people out there who don't believe in certain teachings. Because guess what? When I came into the church, well, I was initiated into the church. But when God found me and grabbed my heart and pulled me into the church, I didn't believe in any of those teachings. But nobody wants to hear me read a catechism. They want to know why. How many times did we talk about who, what? Where, when, why? I mean, why should be at the front? In anything, why would somebody do this? Because once you get past the why, for example, when I realized how evil the world was and how when I noticed that, hmm, government people you know, corporations, sports kind of groups, universities, Hollywood. Oh my goodness. All of these organizations, institutions do not have my best interests in mind. Do not want me to live a holy Jesus-like, Christian-filled life, and certainly do not want me to be Catholic. You can see the wokeness everywhere. But the why? Well, why would they want to try to harm us? I mean, honestly, it's pretty simple. We're just a bunch of eating, lazy machines. We're a bunch of fat eaters. <laughs> Or we suck up their energy, we take up their resources, we eat their food. I mean, it's hilarious. That's why when you see the World Economic Forum with uh, Charles Schwab, where he's like, you will eat the bugs. I mean, they are like, look, we got to stop with animals. Climate change, another lie. Yes, we should pay attention to how we treat this beautiful earth that God gave us. But darn it, look back, people. Decade after decade after decade. How many times did they say, we're going to be underwater? We're going to be frozen over? We're going to be this? We're going to, the world's going to come to an end? This is emotionally driven. That's how they get you. And now look at the whack job people out there who are protesting in the name of climate change, again, with no science to back it up. As a matter of fact, just like COVID and the drugs, the jabs, weren't what they said. Actually, facts proved the opposite just like masks, proved the opposite. And people are showing the climate change. They're showing the historic temperatures and all of this stuff. <laughs> There's nothing going on, everyone. Oh. Okay, now, I'm kind of going down this evangelism path because we need to take steps to learn to speak to people about this stuff. We need to find things to speak truth about the Catholic faith, but also about what's going on. So tonight isn't just why be Catholic. It's why be Catholic and have a prayer life and leverage this beautiful church with all of the sacraments so that God can grow in us so that we can be more courageous not only speaking about our faith, but speaking against the evil in the world. It's time. It's time. I don't know what you're doing to get yourself more comfortable to speak out against what's happening, but do you want your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren to go through life 
in a world where you don't know if someone is a boy or a girl? Where they are cutting off perfectly healthy breasts off of a girl? Mutilating boys, castrating them? Do you see the evil? You may not even have researched this, but the people that are behind this movement, this transgender movement, are sick. They have fetishes. They dress as little girls. They abuse and mutilate little children for sexual pleasure. They get off on it. Sorry. I don't know any other way to say it. Fetish is just so weird. Yeah, a fetish. Oh, I have a foot fetish. Well, think about it. Isn't that person weird? They get off on your feet. They get excited. They get, ooh, well, that's what these doctors, who half of them are trans themselves, are doing. And if you haven't paid attention to Matt Walsh and what he's been doing to try to shut down these places in his own state, Vanderbilt in Nashville, and I think is succeeding because he's also finding things in Boston. These hospitals, that's the word I was looking for. They're not universities. These hospitals had this stuff on their website. This wasn't hidden. This wasn't someone taking a scary video or not scary, but a, you know, secretive video and hiding it while this person's speaking. Uh Uh-uh, this was on their website for everyone to see. And what was that? It was about how much money they can make. They call it top surgery. It's where they cut off little children's breasts. Look, they use euphemisms. Get used to it. Figure it out. Smell them. Sniff them. Sniff them. Are you a euphemism? Are you a a euphemism? Are you a euphemism? Smell it out. Women's reproductive health. Killing an innocent baby. These are euphemisms. (laughs) Top surgery. Cutting off perfectly healthy young girls' breasts. Before age of puberty. Practically, I mean, of course, you have breasts when you're puberty, but before they could possibly re-procreate, have another child. Bottom surgery. Yeah, we're going to chop off a perfectly healthy penis on a boy. He will never be able to have sexual pleasure. Even if you create a vagina down there, it's not going to work. Men cannot be moms. This is insanity. But the whole purpose behind it is destroying us and making money on us. And there are doctors and psychologists all across the globe that are taking advantage of this. They don't care. The first thing they're doing is putting you into connection with someone who's going to give you these horrible puberty blockers that are irreversible and possibly surgery. Why aren't we loving these people enough to actually have them love their bodies as they are? Because guess what? Every single person on the face of this earth who has gone through puberty has not liked their body. That's a fact. That's the part of the awkward stage of puberty. And oh, by the way, a lot of them also go on into adulthood and don't like their body. Or maybe they're just not a typical man or woman. So I look at myself. I said this on Saturday. I said, look, I was a little chubby, soccer playing, mousy brown haired tomboy. I did not have a doll, ever. I never even had a Barbie. That's it. I mean, I played hockey. I played sports. One could have looked at me and said, maybe this should be a boy. Can you imagine? I've talked to so many people 
women who said, oh my gosh, I might have been one of those that fell into this. And this is what happened. They get, they get sucked into these sites and they groom them. It's real, people. So when are we going to stop being silent, scared, and keep our eye on eternity? I don't know about you, but I'm not looking at Jesus and saying, oh, yeah, sorry, Jesus. I just didn't want to be called a homophobe, a transphobe, a, you know, a racist, a right wing extremist, a conspiracy theorist. You know, I just didn't want all those labels. So I decided to shut my mouth and live my life myself. And that is not what he asks us to do. As a matter of fact, he doesn't ask us. He commands us. Go be disciples and make disciples. Don't just sit in your house and do your faith on your own. Get out there. You are my feet. You are my hands. And darn it, you are my voice. Pray for detachment. Pray for the Holy Spirit to put in your heart what you need to say. And by the way, just find reasons. Watch podcasts. Get on Matt Walsh's podcast. If the very least that you can do, share it. Get on Allie Beth Stuckey's podcast. She's great too. If at the very least you can't speak about it, Share it. But don't use the excuse that you don't know your faith well enough. You don't know what's going on well enough. You don't know the catechism or the Bible well enough, because that's bunk. I don't know it all myself either. I'm way more in tune with the New Testament than the Old. So what do I do? I force myself into the old. And hey, you know what? Those those are great. <laughs> oh, Father Michael, Father Simon, Father Simon from Relevant Radio and I were talking and he was like, you know what? The Bible is the best soap opera ever. I mean, if you really want to get into some heated stuff, that's it. I don't know. Just trying to entice you one way or the other. So on this feast day, for St. Luke, the evangelist. This is a calling to us. Tomorrow, promise. I'm going to come to you with this evil that is in our life. I can, I'm probably going to have to finish the rest of the week going through the book, going through, you know, the spirits. But I think it will be a nice, sorry, I'm looking for the words, be a nice follow-up to this. Why? Let's ask the why. Why would all these evil people be all across all these areas and all this wokeism and this ideology? Why? Because they want to destroy humanity. It's really that simple. They don't want as many of us. They only need a certain amount of us. By the way, that's why they're going down this path of transhumanism. Don't even get me started on that. I haven't even started with that. If you haven't seen any of the transhumanism stuff on Steve Bannon's War Room show, you should check it out. There's a dude that's way into it. I can't remember his name, but you can go look at his stuff. They're looking for more robotics than humans. Because again, we're just a bunch of fat eaters eating their food, sucking up their resources and their land. Why do you think they're buying land everywhere? Have you seen how much land Bezos and Gates has purchased? Do you know that we even have Chinese police here in America? (laughs) They have their own police stations smattered around. If you don't think that something evil is going on and has been going on for decades, you're just not paying attention. And that's the why they don't care about us. As a matter of fact, they curse us. They kill us through their drugs. They make money on us hand over foot. They tax us every which way to Sunday. Let's think about it. Where 
I shared a thing, and I don't even know if I read it to you. I might have done it on a podcast. All of the taxes. Just open up one bill. One bill that you get. Electric, gas, phone, internet, whatever. And think about it. You have to have you have to have a license, which is another tax, to fish. You have to have a license to hunt. You have to have a, you know, and I know there are reasons for these, oh, population control, yada, 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 but I'm pretty sure that we're not out there poaching, you know, to death, to extinction. Unless, of course, we all go off the grid. We don't eat <laughs> any of the grocery store food and all that kind of stuff. All right, now I'm getting a little, a little long in the tongue here, so I'm going to pull back. I'm pulling back because I want you to look at everything. Don't just let these last two years fly by without you saying, huh, what was that? (laughs) What was that? What did I see? What did I learn? Excuse me. What was that? And then you can see it even more so now. Evil is out there, and that's why we need God, we need prayer, we need knowledge and understanding, and we just need to know how to talk to someone in basic, normal terms. It's funny, when I bring up the word Eucharist, I spell it. <laughs> I spell it and I'm like, yeah, I looked at that thing. I was like, what kind of a word is this? <laughs> it means Thanksgiving. Some of us don't even know that. And by the way, that's what Jesus wants you to do when you receive him. Is thank him. We're going to short prayer. No. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, we're just going to say, Please give us more faith. We believe, help our unbelief. Help us loose our tongue and be who you want us to be on this earth, sharing what you want us to share, which is truth and your church and the gospel that only through you can we be saved. And that people can come to you for forgiveness and to turn their life around. And to be with you and the Father in heaven forever. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's hard, 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 hard not to pray without without that on the front and the back. And that's why we're Catholic. We invoke the Holy Trinity in every prayer. Let's go call on St. Luke and be the evangelist that we can be, that we're called to be, that will free us. The first time you say it, it's probably not going to be perfect. The second time you say it, it'll be better. The third time, the fourth time, and before you know it, people will ask you, and you will be... You just got to loose the tongue once, give it a shot. Live and learn, live and learn, live and learn. And by the way, everyone's different. The same message may not work for Susie as it did for Paul. So we just have to be aware and keep thinking about who's in our sphere of influence and what's the best way to speak with them. Okay. You can do it. We can do it. Let's do it together. If you want me, I can even do topics on how do you talk about this? I could... If that's helpful, I could do full podcasts on certain subjects if that's what you what you're looking for. And keep praying for me because I don't know, I'm having procrastination issues with this speak truth with love Catholic guide thing that I'm doing. I'm just beating my head against the wall on this one topic and I'm not going past it. I should probably just go past it and then come back. Everything's being held up because of that. So pray for me, pray for me, pray for me that what the Lord put in my mind and in my heart what I should put in that section. And then to get on it, 
I mean, we need this. This is why I'm doing this. I have my other book. It's so funny. I pulled that thing out three quarters of the way done. I'm like, oh my gosh, how different I am now. So I almost have to go back, <clears throat> tweak it a bit, re rewrite parts of it. But anyway, it's amazing what has happened in a year. So please go back, reflect on two years of the lies coming into the light and ask yourself why it's not for us. It's for them, for their enrichment, for their power, for their control. All right, everyone, <laughs> get out there and be loved. I know this might sound a little down, but Jesus wins. We know. Hello. So we've got him. Let's fight the fight. Tomorrow we're going to dive into the ways that Satan and his little devils <clears throat> and demons can come and attack us physically, mentally. I'm going to talk about how we let them in and how we need to continue to fight and battle them, especially the ones that we cast out recently that have been kind of camping out in our souls for decades. They're not going to go away. They're going to go away, but they're not going to go away without trying to come back. They're comfortable here. You're the soul they've been assigned to torment. You just kicked them out. They're not happy. So they're going to come back. They're going to tempt you. They're going to try, 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 try again. And the more that you fight with deliverance prayers, the more they're going to get tired and say, okay, I'm done with this guy. I'm going to the next. Because clearly this person has the rule book. God gave us the rule book, everyone. It's the Bible and it's Jesus himself and the power of his name. So let's use it. All right. I love you all. Find something more with God and have a blessed and inspired day.